things I've ever knitted. I think it is actually, let's just say that. Let's just put it out there. That is one of my favorite knits ever. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. I am a knitter and a sewist and this is my channel by Rachel Bean. Um, you may have noticed if you've been subscribed to my channel for a while that we've had a bit of a name change. Um, I decided to change to by Rachel Bean. Um, Stitch and Pearl was kind of a name that I set up a while ago um, for a business that I set up back in 2019 of little handmade cardigans, children's cardigans that I was selling. And that was the name of my Instagram. And then when I sort of went um, back into work and I started um, writing and doing content creation for my work, I wanted to have my name in my handle. Um, and then I used it as the name of my newsletter, but my newsletter has relaunched this year on Substack. I'll put the link in the, um, description for you in case you want to check that out and that's got a completely new name so it just felt like new year it was the right time to just change this channel name to my actual name <laughs> so it's now by Rachel Bean um if you are new here welcome it's so lovely to have you here um I share lots of videos on a handmade homegrown and slow life here in the Cotswolds where I live with my husband and my rescue dog Pearl who you might be able to hear she is currently in this room with me it is very cold here at the moment like going down to minus figures in the night which probably isn't very cold to a lot of people watching from different countries but here it's quite cold so Pearl is very cold she's in her jumper and she's so cold I've had to wrap her in a blanket as well so she's a bit moany in the corner of the room because she's cold I mean she's literally wearing like way more layers than I am but if you hear any moaning that's Pearl in the corner being grumpy okay so before I start I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone who supported my launch last week of um the slow nature journal which is my new sub stack as I mentioned earlier. Um, it is basically a weekly publication um, all to do with handmade homegrown and slow living. Um, we have feature articles, how to's, um, the latest one was the seasonal celebrations which comes out every single month which is about how to enjoy each month um, sort of slowly and seasonally. Um, there's so much coming this year I'm so excited but thank you so much to everybody who has already supported. If you would like to support me and my work if you enjoy my content on this channel or on Instagram or both <laughs> um, my Substack is a really great way to um, support me um, and support my content creation work um, so yeah I'll pop the link below so you can like check it out um, and see what you think and um, it would mean the world to me if you feel like you could subscribe. Um, today's video is going to be a everything that I made in 2023. I have already watched quite a few of these videos and have really really enjoyed them. Um, I've watched who have I watched? I've watched Emily Kate made this, who I really enjoyed hers. It was it was all knitting. Actually, most of the ones I've watched have been knitting. So I watched Emily Kate made this. I've watched Caroline's Caroline knits. I've watched um, oh, I think it's Marlene's Marlene knits or um. I can't remember the name of her channel, um, but Marlena <laughs> um, has posted a really great video. And I watched Janelle's, um, which she actually posted in December um, from Rosary Apparel. Um, and hers is mostly sewing with a little bit of knitting. Um, but yeah, I really enjoy watching these and I really enjoy making them. Um, I have written a list on my phone because I know that I'm going to forget going month by month what I made each month. Um, obviously like a lot of them will have been started in a different month and then finished so it's like what I finished that month like finished products especially knitwear is often knitted like you know like over two months for me or sometimes even three months <laughs> because I'm quite a slow knitter um so yeah and also excuse me um I mentioned in my last video if you watched that that I was very sick over Christmas I had pleurisy I still have pleurisy a little bit so my chest is a bit tight I'm a bit sort of yeah just wheezy so if I sound a bit funny that's why um so yeah hopefully hopefully that will start to lift in the next few weeks I'm getting pretty fed up of being ill um but there we go <laughs> anyway let's just crack on and start with the video I think because as I say I've got this big list of all the different things I made haven't actually counted let me count how many things there are 
wow okay um i made 43 things in 2023 a mix of sewing crochet and knitting um that is quite a lot of things <laughs> um wow um and i haven't actually i didn't sew at all in december because i was so ill i haven't actually been at my sewing machine yet this year um so yeah that's even more crazy there was a lot of knitting to be fair because i was in bed and on the sofa um a lot so <laughs> yeah let's crack on with the makes um so in january um my first finished make was the gandhi sweater which i was making for my husband um this is a mode at rowan pattern um if you followed me for a while you might know that i've worked with mode at rowan a few times they've sent me a few things very kindly um and this was one of them the gandhi sweater which was one of their first um patterns for men that they released i think oh when was that i think it was like september 2022 they released um their pattern book so they release um autumn winter and spring summer so i think they're by annual pattern books and this is the first one that had some patterns for men in and I thought this jumper was really really nice and it's knit in alpaca soft DK which is one of my favourite rowan yarns I'm a big fan of alpaca wool mixes um and yeah it was just beautiful to work with my husband picked the colour that he wanted I wanted a more interesting <laughs> colour I wanted to pick like a nice green or something but no he picked like charcoal gray which is fine that's what he wanted um but yeah i finished that in the january it was a super easy knit because it's knit flat um and sewn up and it's a off the shoulder so there wasn't even really any armhole shaping or anything it was just like essentially a load of rectangles and it was um in broken rib so it's got a nice texture to it and um you guys will know if you follow me for a while that i'm a big fan of textural knits that's kind of my thing um i'm not really a color work person i am definitely a cables and texture person um so yeah i finished that for him in january and he wore that absolutely loads so it was really worth doing and he's worn it loads as well like he started putting it back on again in november um at the end of 2023 and yeah has worn it loads since then which makes me very happy because obviously like knitting a man's jumper takes a really long time because just like the length of the torso like like chest wise obviously like for a lot of people that like i have quite a big bust so actually chest wise it's not that dissimilar in width to like what i'd need to knit for my own bust but for um the length oh my word it just goes on forever i think as well because i knit a lot of crop stuff for myself because i wear a lot of dresses so yeah something that goes all the way down to the hips it just feels like it just takes forever um but yeah he really loves that um and wears it lots so it was definitely worth doing um i tend to knit him one jumper a year so i'm currently working on something that i'm hoping to finish at the end of january that seems to be our standard is i seem to start knitting something for him in like december and then finish it at the end of january <laughs> so that's like our thing now um so that was the first thing that i finished my next thing was um my graduation dress which i sewed um i graduated at the end of january i think it was the 30th of january was my graduation day uh from my masters in nature and travel writing um and i made my dress for my graduation um i made it in this lovely bottle green um like jacquard satin fabric um i really undernard about what to like what to use what fabric what to wear etc because um it was obviously a winter uh, graduation my gown was dark 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 navy blue with a pale blue like thing on the hood um so i was sort of like oh i need something that goes with that <laughs> um so i made this dress i made um a an indigo dress i basically made the same thing that i'd made previously one of my favorite dresses which is an indigo dress with an added ruffle on the bottom and anthea blouse sleeves um which i made in a lemon fabric in 2022 and i wore to a wedding and i absolutely love that dress i wear it every summer um it's one of my favorite favorite dresses however in this lovely silky jacquard fabric it didn't really work as well because the sleeves didn't hold the shape of the anthea like because it's quite a big puff sleeve so they were quite sort of loose and they sort of just fell a bit flat which didn't matter on the day because i was wearing a gown for the whole day so you couldn't actually see the sleeves so that was fine um but i was a little bit sad about that and i have worn the dress since a couple of times and every time i've thought the same thing so i think that's going to be one of my jobs this year is i'm going to take the sleeves off and i'm going to redo them i think just as an indigo sleeve but with a shorter you know the indigo sleeve has the sort of like fluted bit at the elbow but i'm going to do like a smaller shorter fluty bit um so that's the plan 
with that one um and i have my sister-in-law's wedding in may so i might wear it for that because i have a bag that goes with it and a pair of shoes that i bought to go with it um so i might just get some kind of headpiece as well um and i think that would be really really nice because it's a lovely color that bottle green um so yeah that was my first sew in january my next sew I made for the week, we took a week's holiday for my graduation because I graduated from Bath Spa University um, in Bath, funnily enough, um, and it was a long distance masters. So, um, you know, we traveled there um, and we thought it would be really nice just to take a week's holiday to celebrate because I worked incredibly hard on that masters. I was quite severely unwell when I began it. Um, I'd had chronic illness for a couple of years and I was still very unwell when I began it and I obviously worked from home um, and I just wanted to really celebrate that I'd managed to get through my masters and not just get through but actually graduate with a first which was just like an incredible achievement for me so yeah we took a week's holiday and so I made a couple of bits for that holiday because I knew it was going to be really cold we rented a lovely cottage with a hot tub which is kind of our thing we often like to get a hot tub chill in the hot tub um so I made my first ever billy dress um, in this lovely pink sweatshirting fabric um, and I made it with the big balloon sleeves so it's got like a bit of drama to it and I made it with pockets so it's quite useful um, and yeah it went really well. I used Mariflex thread and I did it on a um, normal sewing machine with a straight um, stitch which you can do with Mariflex thread it's a slightly stretchy thread that's made for stretch fabrics to sew on a normal machine unfortunately I don't think I've quite got the tension right or something like that because the first few makes I did with Mariflex they've sort of come away a bit at some of the seams have come away a bit so I did have to sort of go over the seams again on that dress but I have worn it a lot I'm a big fan of it it's a great dress for working from home as well like at the moment when it's really cold yeah I wear a big thermal vest and thermal leggings and big thick socks it's good for walking the dog because it's got pockets so yeah big fan of that dress that got quite a lot of wear because it's just so comfy isn't it to wear just like a giant jumper essentially um so yeah that was one of the makes I made for holiday and then my next one was a Lyra dress um which is my first ever Lyra dress as well I made this in a lovely um, cotton flannel fabric that I bought quite a while ago from um, Cool Crafting up in Kendall, which is an amazing shop. If you're ever in Kendall in the Lake District, you should go to Cool Crafting. It's great for knitting and for sewing. So many beautiful fabrics. Um, but yeah, I made my first Lyra. Now, I am not a fan at all of the Lyra. <laughs> it was a nightmare to sew. It's the first time I've ever done a proper collar and collar stand, so it was very much an experience for me. But yeah, I found it to be a bit of a nightmare. I messed it up quite a lot. So I'm not very pleased with the finish garment I have to say I wore it a bit on holiday but basically it came out I made my size and it came out really oversized which I often find with Tilly and the button patterns as they are quite generous I often have to size down so it was really baggy and I tried to take it in to make it more flattering before I went on holiday and it just didn't really work and it just doesn't look quite right and I basically haven't worn it which is such a shame because that fabric is just gorgeous it's so soft and I love a tartan in the winter so I think to be honest with you I'm probably going to take the top off it and make a different top to go on it so I'm going to like keep the skirt as it is because it's just a basic gathered skirt take the top off open up all the seams and see how much fabric there is and I think there will probably be enough um, it's not a directional print so I may be able to move things around a bit. Um, I'm hoping there will be enough to make a simple dress top so I can make something that I'm actually going to wear um, because as I say I absolutely love that fabric and it's really sad to me that I don't get to wear it. I think I will have another go at the Lyra and I might have a go at it in like a summer fabric and a lightweight cotton it might be a bit easier I might work a bit better so I might have another go at that in the summer at some point and see sort of what happens um, but yeah it didn't go too well. <laughs> okay so now we're moving on to February um my first finished make in February was a pair of rainbow socks I got this gorgeous West Yorkshire spinners yarn off um Santa my husband <laughs> um when um like for Christmas 2022 um it was in my stocking um and it's just like a beautiful I think it's called wildflower meadow and it, it's just like beautiful rainbow yarn um so I just made my usual socks I have never made any other pattern apart from the Louise Tilbrook like beginner sock pattern I've made it so many times now and um it's just really nice easy stocking stitch like 
yeah I've got so many pairs of socks in that now I am going to try and diversify a bit this year and try some different patterns but yeah that I think was my second pair of socks that I've made ever um and it's just so nice to have that self-patterning yarn and they're so cozy um they have felted quite badly though which is funny because my other West Yorkshire spinner socks which are made from the same yarn the um signature four ply haven't felted at all so I'm not really sure why those ones have felted so much yeah maybe they're not super washed and I didn't read the label correctly um but anyway I still wear them they're still super cozy um so that was my first make in February and then I made another billy dress because I love the first one so much I bought some more fabric to make myself a like more relaxed one because I found with the big sleeves it was quite like you know who I'm here <laughs> um so I made a more relaxed one for working from home I didn't put pockets in it or anything it's just literally a throw on jumper dress it's got safety pins on it um it's made in fabric from hey so sister one of my favorite fabric shops online if you're looking for a good place to shop for fabric hey so sister is the place to go um so yeah really love that um really cozy it's not as cozy I have to say as like the pink one it's not as fleecy that fabric but um it's quite nice for like early spring sort of um early autumn time sorry late spring early autumn time when it's not quite so um chilly so yeah that's a really nice one um and then my next dress that I made um oh I say my next dress I'm just looking at my list that's not what's next on the list um I then made two headbands um I released a knitting pattern my first ever knitting pattern the antler headband pattern um which was the headband that I made on Kirsty's Handmade Christmas in December 2022 a few people had asked for it so I re released the pattern and for that pattern release I decided to make up a couple of samples they're super easy to make it takes like two hours because it's knit on I think eight millimeter needles and and it's chunky yarn and it's just a simple cable stitch super easy um so yeah I made a blue one and a like magenta one um and yeah I have so many headbands now they are like my go-to I like throw my hair up in a bun or in a bobble and walk the dog with a headband on keeps my ears warm it's just the best um they are like so toasty warm though those are the only ones I have in wool the other ones that I made like from a while ago from years ago are made in an acrylic yarn and wool oh my word so much warmer <laughs> so that's February's makes then in March I made a lotter dress in Jersey I'd made the lotter dress before um in cotton in a gingham cotton in 2022 um and I really like the pattern because it's really simple really easy and I thought that would be quite nice to make a working from home dress in Jersey so I got this lovely leopard jersey it had this amazing drape to it I think it was from textile express really lovely soft fabric um and yeah that came out really well exactly what i hoped like a really nice easy t-shirt dress i just throw it on if it's a cold day I throw it on over a slip with a big cardigan tights boots perfect um so i think i'm going to make another one of those however i think i might shorten the length because that one's quite long so i might shorten the length so it's very much knee length um i've got some nice fabric in my stash that i bought last spring um that's like navy with pink flowers on that would make a really nice t-shirt dress so I think I will make that this year um and then my next thing I made was a pair of Juno pajamas there's a lot of stretch fabric I suddenly got into stretch fabric thanks to the Mariflex thread and I didn't need an overlocker for it because I didn't have an overlocker at the time um so yeah I made the Juno pajamas from Tilly and the Buttons Make It Easy book um they were as they said very easy <laughs> um really nice and comfortable i wear those all the time again i've had the same issue though where the seams seem to be going in all different places and i've had to go over the stitching a few times and i've just noticed a few more holes and it's getting a bit frustrating now i have an overlocker i'm hoping to just like overlock everything just to like keep everything secure and safe because yeah it just doesn't seem to i don't know why i just obviously didn't get the tension right or something on the mariflex thread um because it just seems to be coming undone in places um so yeah i think i need to overlock those but yeah i made them in a lovely fabric from work i work for the cotswold sewing centers um really nice jersey fabric that they had it's so soft and warm and lovely to wear in the winter um and then the next thing i made after that was actually a pair of juno like pajama bottoms but as like sweatpants and i don't actually have any pictures of these unfortunately i can't put them up for you but it's the same jersey that i used for my first billy dress the plain pink one and i literally just had some left over um because i bought way too much because i find this with tilly patterns as well that the amount of fabric they tell you need is way more than you actually need um so i had quite a bit left over so yeah i just ran up some 
super cozy little jogging bottoms that I wear all the time um because they're like lovely fleece backed pink joggers <laughs> so yeah wear those all the time and then the final thing that I made in March was another pair of socks I had this yarn in my stash it's another self patterning yarn I can't remember who the yarn is by it was like a wool mix acrylic mix nylon etc um but yeah just like beautiful spring colors which I thought would just be perfect for March so I just knitted those up um, and now we're moving into April. I'm trying to like speed up a bit because I realised I've been talking for quite a while already. Um, so April was the month of the strawberry apparently um, because I made um, a strawberry blouse, an Anthea blouse. So I picked up this gorgeous fabric from Fabric Godmother that was released. I think this fabric went absolutely mad. It was released at the stitch festival in march which i went to and i was lucky enough to go on the first day on the thursday so all the stalls were like fully stocked they hadn't run out of anything yet and um i managed to get my hands on some of this strawberry fabric because i know it went out of stock in a lot of places and the lady who runs fabric godmother i can't remember her name i think it might be josie um she was wearing an anthea blouse in the fabric and i just thought that's gorgeous i am going to make <laughs> um one of those and i did and i wore it absolutely loads it's great with my dungarees really comfy it just sort of like smartens the dungarees up a little bit it's a linen viscose blend so it doesn't crease as much as linen but it has that gorgeous softness to it linen's definitely a fabric i think i want to explore a bit more this year um i will talk about this more in my next video that's coming out next week i have a lot of plans for like my making and things like that and a lot of it centers around using more sustainable um natural fibers and fabrics and things like that um and so yeah that was my first experience of making with linen and i really really enjoyed it and then the next thing i made was a knitted garland for my mum i made a daffodil garland for my mum uh, for mother's day um like me she likes to sort of decorate seasonally and i thought it'd be quite nice for easter and stuff so i made her this lovely daffodil garland that i knitted um i actually have taken it back from her because it was curling quite badly and i need to like try and block it out i need to remember to do that so that she can put it out again like quite soon <laughs> so i need to get on with that um and then the final thing I made in April was a strawberry dress. I made the Mabel dress. I picked up this pattern at the Stitch Festival. It was launched at the Stitch Festival in March. And um, I absolutely love this pattern. Oh my goodness. I've made it three times now and I know I'm gonna make even more this summer. It is just such a good pattern. It's so comfortable. It's very like cottage core because it's sort of like peasant dress style. Um, it's like elasticated waist, just like, oh, so easy to throw on. You can have it maxi. You can have it short you could have it tiered like there's so much you can do with this pattern and um, which you'll see later on in this video because I obviously made lots of different versions so this one I went for the long sleeved version um because it was April and it was still freezing cold I remember my birthday is the 15th of April and I remember it was like eight degrees on my birthday it was so cold so um yeah I made it in this gorgeous pink viscose it's a dead stock fabric from um Rainbow Fabrics Kilburn um and yeah I fell in love with this fabric I saw Brogan from the Crafty Pie share it on her Instagram and I was like I need some of that and she had a discount code and I bought some <laughs> and I bought way too much because I thought I was going to make a really big my plan was to make like a really big tiered skirt and in the end I just went simple um so I have quite a bit left over and then they had a sale so I bought a little bit extra so that I can make a full set of pajamas so I'm hoping to make long trousers long top pajamas because I just think that's going to be so cute to have a full like hot pink set of like strawberry pajamas um i'm not sure when i'm going to get around to that but yeah i absolutely love that fabric two bits and then we move into may now i didn't really make much at all in may um may was a really difficult month for us um if you have followed me for a while you'll know um we had to um rehome our rescue dog uh rodney who um we had rescued like six months before that in the november as a puppy um unfortunately as he got to like full sized um him and pearl started fighting quite a bit um she didn't like it once he was bigger than her and could sort of push her around and pearl became deeply unhappy and anxious and we had to make the really difficult decision to rehome him so um yeah that really affected my uh month that month because he basically left us on the first of june um and that whole month was spent trying to find a new home for him 
it was a really difficult time and the reason I'm sharing this might seem a bit random is just because at the time when I was going through it I felt like the worst person in the world and I felt like everybody else who'd rescued a dog had like managed to keep it and was a wonderful person and I think it's important because when I shared on social media that we'd had to rehome him like about 10 people messaged me to say that they had gone through the same thing and how awful it is and how heartbreaking it is and I just think it's important to talk about it that sometimes when you rescue a dog um or any animal it just doesn't work out sometimes it's just not the right fit and you've not done anything wrong in fact you've done the right thing by recognizing that early and getting help from professionals um you know we had loads of help from the blue cross who are absolutely amazing um and yeah it's it was just a really difficult thing to go through um and that kind of marred spring for us spring was a really difficult time um so yeah <laughs> anyway <laughs> the one thing that i made in may was another mabel dress because i wanted to make something really simple and easy i had this beautiful um blue red and white gingham is it gingham it's like a check i'm not really sure what you'd call it and it was like a sort of cheesecloth fabric it had like real texture to it and it was a cotton that i bought from fabric godmother i absolutely love that dress it is like i know that as soon as it gets hot again this year i will be wearing that all the time it's such an easy throw on it's so cool and lightweight so we had some really hot days um this year uh, we had some hot days actually like in september we had like 25 26 27 degrees and that was the dress i kept reaching for because you look really put together but actually all i'd done was throw on this super lightweight dress with a pair of trainers and just leave the house sunglasses done <laughs> um so yeah i absolutely love that dress to bits so comfy so nice to wear um so yeah that was my one make for me and then in june um i sort of picked up a bit i finished my serene forest cardigan as it's called um in drops air sorry i forgot what it was called then um which is the blown yarn which i bought from work in the shade heathered which is beautiful pink um so yeah i finished that cardigan it's a really lovely lightweight cardigan um the only thing i would say is um it stretches a huge amount when you block it so i thought i'd made a much shorter cardigan than i actually had because when i blocked it it then just came out huge um so it's now a really long cardigan um which is fine but it just looks a bit odd because i wear dresses most of the time and i often find that when you wear a really long cardigan that goes like almost past your bum um with a dress it kind of for me anyway it sort of cuts things up a bit strangely so i haven't got the most wear out of that it's more of a sort of home cardigan it's very warm it's very cozy as i say it's great for wearing at home because it's nice and big but it's just not quite the length that I was hoping for, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but yeah, I finished that one. It was very easy. It was a stocking stitch um, cardigan. It was a free pattern from Drops. Um, if you don't know, Drops Yarn have thousands of free patterns on their website that go along with their yarn. So if you want to you know get yourself some drops yarn I would suggest buying it from the Got Sourcing Centre where I work. <laughs> um, and um, yeah popping on their website and checking out all their patterns because there are just so many um so that was the first thing that i finished the next thing i knit was a pistachio cable knit cardigan little baby cardigan um, for my friend whose baby was due in august um i had this yarn in my stash already i think it was a paint box baby dk i think that's what it was called um but yeah it was just an acrylic yarn that i had in this lovely pistachio color it's just super cute so i made that little card again i absolutely loved it i wish i could have like made an adult size for myself because i love pistachio it's one of my favorite colors um so yeah that was really really sweet um and then the next thing i made was a pair of linen trousers i made some purple linen trousers for work um big wide leg trousers they're the rose pants by made by ray um and they're super comfy super lovely high-waisted really nice the issue is i don't wear trousers so i made them because it was like a thing for work and we put them in the window and da, 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 da. but now i've got them back i just don't wear separates this is something that i've discovered is since i've become chronically ill and i have um ibs and endometriosis I just really don't find separates comfortable. I often have a very sore tummy. Um, I'm often quite bloated. So they're just not for me. So those trousers, 
I made a blouse to go with them as well but that blouse was then turned into a dress later which I'll talk about when that was finished. Those trousers I think are destined to be um, cut up and turned into something else this year so I'm probably going to undo them, lay all the fabric out and see how much fabric there is. I'm hoping because there's quite a lot of fabric because they're really wide legged that there is enough to make the um, either the nutmeg jacket by um, oh brain's gone dead Coco Wawa or the oh what's that new jacket called from Tilly and the Buttons that has got a frilly collar uh, that they sent me they sent me the pattern very kindly and I can't remember the name of it but that's probably what those trousers are going to end up becoming um and then the last thing that I made in June was a plum dress which is a Coco Wawa pattern. I've made this before in a lovely navy gingham and it's so comfy and so breezy and so easy and I wanted a really nice lightweight chilled cotton dress for working from home because in the summer it gets so hot. I like I can't imagine it now because I'm literally freezing in my office but <laughs> in the summer it gets absolutely roasting up here so I wanted something that I could just like throw on that's super lightweight that I can walk the dog in and I got this beautiful sage gingham cotton from um the stitch festival in March um and yeah just made a simple plum dress super comfy super easy absolutely love it wore it so much over the summer I was surprised because I made it as a like working from home dress but I ended up wearing it like every weekend I was just throwing it on because it was just one of those really really comfortable dresses so I was really pleased with that one. Okay now we're moving into July so my first finished knit of July was this little blue hand knit bunny um this pattern is from Wool Couture I have their book I think it's called like Robin Octopus and Friends or something <laughs> and this is the mini Mabel bu bunny pattern it was very easy to make it was just very fiddly i don't really enjoy knitting toys because it's lots and lots and lots of little bits that you then have to like sew together and i just find it fiddly and boring <laughs> um but it was a good use of some yarn that i had in my stash my friends absolutely loved it it went with the little pistachio cardigan um as a gift for the baby and they absolutely loved it um so yeah I don't know what they named the bunny I should have asked them actually um but that was my first make in July and then my next make was a pansy dress by Rosary Apparel I've made the pansy dress before this was my second one um and I made it in this gorgeous Indian block print fabric that again I picked up at the Stitch Festival I have wanted to make something in Indian block print fabric for a really long time and so when I saw Cloth Atelier there I was like I need to get some and I'm so glad I did because they are an amazing brand for fabric. They sell beautiful gorgeous fabric created by artisans. They go to India to see the people who actually make the fabric. They make sure that working conditions are as they should be. Um, they have just released a new line of woven fabrics I think which are um, like hand woven fabrics by a women's cooperative and it's sorted it's you know supporting female business they are a really fantastic brand they are somebody that i will continue to shop with this year um i was really really impressed with them and i was really impressed with their fabric because um it hasn't faded at all i wore this dress loads so it obviously got washed quite a bit hasn't faded at all hasn't sort of disintegrated <laughs> in any way um it's really good high quality but extremely lightweight which is what you want in the summer when it's really hot um and just like the most beautiful designs um so yeah i made a pansy dress which is just like one of my go-to patterns now which i absolutely love this little puff sleeve dress fits really nicely uh wore that absolutely loads over the summer um and then my next dress Oh no, actually, I should probably talk about my Nora cardigan that I made, which actually went really nicely with that dress. So my Nora cardigan was a bit of a farce because basically I created, I followed, like, was, like, from a vintage pattern, a vintage sweater pattern, I, um, what's the word? developed I don't know anyway I changed this vintage pattern and I started making it and I made it into a sweater and then when I finished the sweater I tried it on and it just wasn't working for me because I had done like this very traditional vintage way of having like a really big rib so that it's like up on your waist and I just didn't really like it for the same reason why I don't like a lot of things because of like my endometriosis and I get bloated etc so I just wasn't a fan of the jumper and I thought it's such a shame like I've put so much work into it it's made in a 
along with like Anna Merino, so it's quite expensive, um, the yarn, and really beautiful, and I just felt really sad. So, because I'd knit it in pieces, because it was a vintage pattern, I made the decision to adapt it into a cardigan. So I took the front piece off, unraveled the front piece and basically turned it into two pieces and turned it into a cardigan um it worked really really well i'm really pleased with it um it's therefore technically my own pattern design which i named the nora i don't know if i will be releasing that pattern i dabbled with pattern design in 2023 and discovered that i don't really enjoy it i find it extremely stressful and I'm not a natural pattern designer. Um, I'm a natural designer. I can design things for myself. I hack patterns. I create things from scratch, but I'm not natural at turning those into something else that somebody else could make. So I've just had to kind of accept that. And there's no point in doing something like pattern design if it doesn't bring you any joy. So for those who have been asking about the Nora cardigan, I don't know right now. I think if um, I felt like I could financially afford to pay for somebody else to grade and do it for me, that's definitely a possibility in the future, but that would require a lot of support this year, like with my other ventures. So we will see. But anyway, the Nora cardigan, I really, really love. I've worn it absolutely loads. And what's been so amazing is that I wore it over the summer thinking it was going to be a spring summer cardigan because it's a lovely pale green. It's jade as the shade of yarn that I used. Um, and then we got to autumn and two of the fabrics, so I had a dress already made up from 2022. And one of the dresses I made in, in 2023 have that exact shade of green in them. Like it's like a sort of greeny bluey colour. Um, so it goes perfectly with two other dresses that I have in my wardrobe for autumn winter and then it also goes quite nicely with a couple of winter dresses that I have as well I have a dress with um that's like a liberty print but not actually a liberty fabric which I made in 2022 for Christmas and it the cardigan goes really nicely with that I wore it on Christmas day with that dress so I am overjoyed because I sort of just picked this yarn because I like the colour which I do all the time which is something I really need to change in 2024 and didn't really think about how it was going to go in my wardrobe and actually it goes with like five six of my dresses so it gets loads of wear so I am really pleased with that one that's one of my best knits of 2023 um, and then the last thing I made in July was a grace dress. I'd actually already started this dress back in 2022 and um, managed to print the pattern off without, you know, like you, ch like you have to check when you do like, when you print off a pattern at home, you print it off the first page and you measure the square and you have to adjust, blah, blah, blah. I adjusted for the first page, measured it, it was perfect, then forgot to put those adjustments in when I printed the rest of the pattern. Well done me. So unfortunately, I cut it all out and it was essentially like three sizes too big so um I got really frustrated and threw it in a drawer and couldn't be bothered because this was like September 2022 it wasn't going to get much wear because we were already going into colder weather so I put it away and I came back to it in um July of 2023 and um basically undid all the seams laid all the fabric out and there was plenty of fabric there because I cut it too big so I literally just cut my size out and I made this dress and I absolutely love it um unfortunately it's a bit long and I haven't taken it up yet which is really bad <laughs> I wore it for my father-in-law's 60th birthday um one of the meals that we went out for his 60th birthday and it wasn't um <laughs> wasn't off the floor I was like trailing around so I really need to take it up um I think it's going to make a lovely dress for the summer we've got lots of celebrations it entirely depends on the weather but if it's nice weather in April sometimes we have really hot weather for my birthday I've had like 25 degrees and stuff for my birthday before so it might get some wear then we've got a wedding in May my husband's birthday in early September is often really hot so I'm just really excited to get lots of wear out of that we had a bit of a rubbish summer in 2023 so I'm hoping for a better summer and more chance to wear that dress it definitely feels quite fancy though so it feels more like a going out for dinner dress um but yeah I was really really pleased with how that one came out so now moving into August I made a popcorn cardigan for my friend who's having a baby I made this in soft peach style craft yarn which I had in my stash I had to buy an extra ball to go with it because I made a bigger size I made like a size I think I made size 12 to 18 months um I've made this pattern before absolutely love it it's so easy it's a top-down raglan pattern 
with bubbles <laughs> it's just like so easy and so lovely and looks really sweet and everyone is always like oh my goodness i absolutely love that cardigan that's so lovely i made another one later in the year which i'll show you in a bit um so yeah that came out really really nicely and i was so pleased with that because i then went into my stash and looked for buttons and i literally had buttons that were the exact peach color little flowers that literally exact color i couldn't believe it so <laughs> that was just a complete stash buster which i tried to do a lot of last year and will try to do a lot of this year as well um and then my next dress that i made was the davenport dress uh it's my first ever davenport dress it's a pattern that we stock at work and it was a fabric that we stocked at work it was a double gauze um this was my first time ever sewing with a double gauze as well i really enjoyed it actually um it's a lovely fabric to work with but it's an even more lovely fabric to wear oh my goodness such a lovely fabric i really really like it because um because it's like double layered when it's really really hot i don't really know how to explain this but it seems to like help aerate the body more i don't know why it just it's just a really nice fabric so i'm a really big fan of that dress i made the long sleeve version because um i made it as I say in August so the plan was to get wear of it in September as it got a bit cooler and I have worn it with tights and boots and a slip underneath and a cardigan so it can still be worn throughout autumn but it's quite nice I quite like those kind of burnt orangey colours for August time as we're moving into autumn um so yeah I'm really pleased with how that came out the only thing I would say is I made my size and it's obviously supposed to be oversized and it has a drawstring to bring it in at the waist but because I have narrow shoulders I often find this problem when I make my bust size the shoulders are not where they should be so that's what's happened with the Davenport is the shoulders are further over so I either need to grade them or I think because it came out really big I might just go down a size I may even go down two sizes I need to figure it out because I want to see how much of a difference that will make to like the gathering of the fabric across the bust but it was it's definitely a big oversized pattern which it's supposed to be but I feel like I could go down a bit which I often do because I prefer a more fitted look um but yeah I really enjoyed it I also found as well that the torso was incredibly long I had to take like an inch and a half off the bottom of the torso it was so long so um I need to remember to do that next time um, and the skirt ended up really long as well so again <laughs> I might take like an inch or two off the skirt um, but yeah I'm hoping to remake that pattern this year at some point I wondered about making like a wintry version um, I have some tartan fabric so I might do that with that I'm not sure yet but I really like the frills and um, it makes me laugh though because I've just started watching um little house on the prairie which i've never watched before and i'm loving it i'm at the end of the first series and there's like another seven to go <laughs> and i'm absolutely loving it i can't believe i've never watched this before it's such a like me program um but yeah the davenport looks just like the dresses that they wear that the kids wear in um little house on the prairie which obviously like makes sense because a lot of what was popular and like you know that kind of Laura Ashley style is like coming back now in the 70s and 80s and obviously those dresses are like modelled off the Victoriana so you've got like that kind of Victorian time and then the like 70s and 80s remakes and now the remakes that we're getting like at the moment like um Joni clothing have just brought out a really nice um line that they've done in collaboration with Laura Ashley and it just like looks like something that you could wear in in Little House on the Prairie or Lock Rise to Candlefoot or something like that which I am I'm loving yeah I love that like a lot of I saw somebody the other day posting saying that like apparently the 1990s is coming back in fashion I'd be much more up for the 1890s and I'm like 100% Little House on the Prairie dresses would go for that <laughs> so I really love that um, and then the last thing that I made in August was a little striped camel cardigan um, it's camel with cream stripes on I made in three to six months for um, another friend who's having a baby lots of friends had babies last year <laughs> um, so I made that um, which is really super cute a um, little v-neck um, little wooden buttons it's like a proper granddad chic style cardigan um, and he looks super cute in it so yeah um, I was very pleased with that one um, and then we move into September and in September the first thing I made was my sparkly Mabel dress that went a bit viral um excitingly actually I'm not sure I can share that yet <laughs> I'll have to share that later something is happening with that dress in March mm, there's a little hint for you um but <laughs> yeah so I am just absolutely 
bowled over by the uh, reaction to that dress it was just amazing everyone was so lovely about it and Tilly and the Buttons absolutely like the team at Tilly and the Buttons absolutely loved it as well um it was a bit of a labor of love i have a video you can go back and watch it on how i made that dress because <laughs> it was a bit of a stressful situation but i wore it for my father-in-law's 60th birthday we, it was a black tie dinner and um i did feel like a princess although i left glitter all over the hotel <laughs> um so yeah <laughs> that was my make in september probably one of my most exciting makes of 2023 and then the next dress I made was an Anthea dress. Now this is the top that I was talking about back with the purple trousers. I made this blouse to go with the purple trousers and it looked really, really nice, um, but don't wear separates. So I bought a bit more of the fabric from work and just whacked a skirt on the bottom of the Anthea blouse <laughs> and it worked absolutely fine. Um, unfortunately, I got basically no wear out of that dress because I finished it in mid-September and the weather just suddenly dropped at the end of September and it was freezing cold. Um, and I could, I, it's not, I don't really wear summer dresses with tights. That's just not really my thing. I swap my wardrobe over, I put them away. So that is probably going to come out when the weather warms up in spring. It's a lovely spring dress because it's got loads of pinks and lilacs in it. Really, really pretty. So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting some wear out of that in the spring time. I'm a big fan of an Anthea blouse dress as well because it's like a big smock dress super comfy with big statement sleeves um i think i'll definitely need a tan to wear it as well because it's quite white um so i need to get a bit brown in the sun before i start wearing that one um so yeah i'm looking forward to bringing that one out because it's hardly had anywhere at all okay and then we move into sep no i've just done september oh that's because i missed one thing out <laughs> so many makes um so the last thing i made in september was another pansy dress that's my third pansy dress um and i made the exact same one little puff sleeves and i made it in this lovely quite thick actually cotton that i bought a while ago back oh, november 2022 at the creative craft show that i got kindly got gifted a ticket to um I um yeah picked up this lovely Morris print fabric um and I made the dress with it and I absolutely love it it's one of my favorite dresses that I've made this year um it goes really really nicely with the Nora cardigan that's the autumn print that goes really nicely with the Nora cardigan um so it's had a huge amount of wear I also think it's quite nice as much as it is quite autumnal in colors it's quite nice as well for winter because it's lovely like purples and stuff so it's been getting quite a lot of wear in the winter the only thing is it's short sleeved so I find that when it's cold I didn't have enough fabric to do long sleeves I wish I kind of had because even in the autumn for me it's getting quite cold to wear especially with the Nora because it's a lace cardigan it's got like holes in it um my arms do get a bit chilly um but apart from that I absolutely love that dress it is one of my absolute favorites okay we're almost there we are moving into October <laughs> Um, so my first finished make of October was an autumnal wreath which I crocheted. Um, this is my first ever crochet project. I crocheted some pumpkins which my sister-in-law taught me to do. Um, they were a little bit misshapen but because they were pumpkins it didn't really matter. Um, I definitely haven't got the hang of crochet. I basically made that project and haven't really done much crochet since. Um, I did a little bit over Christmas and I did a little bit back like somebody taught me to do a granny square but I just forget it immediately <laughs> I think I need to sit down with some videos and some books that's sort of how I work that's how I taught myself to knit so I just sat and watched YouTube videos and I just need to sort of work it out for myself because I'd really like to start crocheting some blankets and things like that um so yeah I just need to sort of get on it but I absolutely love that autumn wreath I was so pleased with it I was really sad when I had to take it off the door I'm probably going to end up putting it on the door on the 1st of September <laughs> this year because I just love it so much and it's kind of led to a like a bit of a tradition now I'm now I made an, a winter a Christmas wreath sorry to go on that door and I'm thinking of making a spring one and a summer one. <laughs> so it started a little bit of a tradition of having a little handmade wreath on the lounge door. Um, so yeah, really pleased with that one. And then I also finished my husband's socks. I made him his first pair of socks. He asked me <laughs> if I could make him some socks. When we went to Unravel Festival in February 2023, um, he went around the whole festival with me, which I often 
need him to do firstly because it's a bit sad to go on your own and secondly because i am disabled um i just need a little bit of help so he walked around the whole festival with me for like two and a half hours and at the end he picked up this yarn from adventures in yarn craft this lovely green sock yarn and said could he have those could he have this in a pair of socks and of course i couldn't say no after all of that <laughs> so um i made him a little pair of green socks the only thing i would say is um firstly with all hand knitted socks they get quite slouchy quite quickly so i think i need to experiment this year with knitting elastic in the little ribbon cuffs at the top to keep them up and then secondly um i that's the first time i've used a hand dyed yarn and um they're super washed so i've washed them in the washing machine but they definitely getting paler with each wash um which is fine like it is they're just socks it doesn't matter but that's definitely something to sort of be aware of next time for um hand dyed yarn is that when you wash it the dye does come out and also a little bit worryingly like none of my clothes have been stained because i obviously wash them on a really dark wash but you know just like to be aware of that um and then the last make in october was my first ever curtain i made a curtain for our back door which i'm really really pleased with in this beautiful fabric from um the designer angel strawbridge from escape to the chateau um i am yet to make the matching blind so i finished that in october it's now january and i'm yet to make the matching blind i was planning to do it in december because november was really busy but obviously it was so ill and i've just not been at my sewing machine still not very well now so i'm hoping to get it done by the end of january it is in my plans which i will talk about as i say in the next video so we'll see if i can get that done in time okay moving into november which was a bit of a bumper month as i say it was very busy i wanted to get loads of stuff done before like christmas really started there was a couple of like autumnal makes that i just really wanted to get done um so yeah i made my first ever coco dress which is a tilly in the buttons pattern you can see there's a bit of a theme this year a lot of tilly in the button patterns um it's just a simple t-shirt dress again the narrow shoulder problem so it is a boat neck like a slip neck boat neck thing and it's just too wide it's just way too wide it's fine because it's a working from home dress it's super comfy i wear it like to work from home like at the moment with like 300 layers of thermals underneath um but it's just like as soon as i put a cardigan on it like bunches here because anyway so i i think that the sizing was right everywhere else because i wanted it a bit oversized but i think i need to grade the shoulders in and i need to bring the neckline in so i need to play around with it next time i make it but as i say i bought it as a kind of like working from home pattern for making comfy dresses so for that it's worked really well i made it in a gorgeous french terry first time i've ever worked worked with french terry which i got from hey so sister from georgie and it's just beautiful that fabric is such good quality um she had it in a different color as well and i was so tempted to get some just because it's like one of the nicest fabrics i've ever worked with um and then the second thing i made was a billy dress i'm actually wearing it right now again this is fabric from hey so sister this lovely okra color um i got the ribbing um from dalston mill um and yeah this is one of the coziest jumper dresses ever it's so warm it's so fleecy on the inside as i say georgie's fabric from hey so sister is just always really good quality and again i've like layered it up with about 40 different layers um underneath here <laughs> um but yeah this is one of my favorite dresses that i wear um just like around the house super comfy super cozy um got pockets for dog walking um so yeah that's my third billy this year of 2023 sorry i keep saying this year but it's obviously last year um <laughs> yeah it's my third billy i'm sure there will be more <laughs> i may even make like a billy like sweatshirt for chilling at home um so yeah that was that and then i made a black hat with drops lima which um i bought a new coat to for the winter and like so we're going to germany so i wanted something for germany because i knew it was going to be really cold but then obviously it's going to last me like years this lovely white and black checked coat and so i thought a nice black hat with a sharp white bobble on the top would be really nice so i bought some lima yarn from um work i used this pattern before to make a hat a couple of times with just like dk alpaca yarns like a mix of different so i used one that was 100 percent alpaca i used um rowan with rowan alpaca soft dk which is a mix of wool and alpaca so i knew that that kind of 
um, yarn would work really, really well for this hat, and it did. It looks so good. Um, the Drops Lima has a bit more stability to it i think because the wool in it the wool content in it is a little bit rougher so there's a bit more stability to it than i would say rowan alpaca soft dk even though like so rowan alpaca soft dk is 35 percent alpaca 65 percent wool and it's the same in lima but i would say the lima has a bit more structure to it so it worked really well for a hat and then i picked up the pom-pom at work the bright white pom-pom which is removable which is really great for washing and yeah i wore that hat absolutely loads in germany and i've worn it to be honest all of december as well um you know it wasn't really cold enough in november to be wearing a hat but now it's freezing so it gets a lot of wear that hat because i bought a nice like black pashmina to go with it with both of my coats um and i've got black gloves and stuff so it's like a whole little set <laughs> um so yeah really really pleased with that hat really cozy i'll definitely make that hat again that's as i say the third time i've made that pattern it's the beatrice beanie by oh lisa richardson i want to say it's on rowan's website um but yeah it's a really nice little beanie um that i add a pom-pom to because you always need a pom-pom in life um and then i finished my jenny jacket finally <laughs> um i fin i actually basically finished the jenny jacket at the end of october but i just ran out of yarn it's like middle of october i think um and i just ran out of yarn and i didn't have enough to do the collar so i needed to wait to go and see my friend vicky um from knitter's cottage because that was the yarn that i used was her yarn that she created um from romney sheep that lived just up the road from me um oh my goodness do i love that cardigan i think it's one of the favorite things i've ever knitted i think it is actually let's just say that let's just put it out there that is one of my favorite knits ever it is so warm it is so cozy and it i think part of the reason why i love it so much is it, it's such a simple design it's smocking stitch in car in knitting but it is essentially knit to purl to that is literally it that's all you do and then you just like pull the yarn through to gather it and it looks amazing um and i love it it's just so good whenever i'm like oh it's a cold day which it basically is every day at the moment that is what i put on i put that cardigan on and i'm so toasty warm i just love it to bits so i'm so pleased with that i'm so pleased that i bought my friend vicky's yarn um <laughs> i am like romney it was romney lamb's fleece as well so it was quite soft because it was obviously like their first shearing um but yeah i'm really enjoying exploring british um sheep breed wool to work with um so yeah that was a really really nice like thing to work with um in 2023 so i just love that cardigan so much wear out of it um especially when i was in germany and then I made a couple of baby cardigans. So I made this um, little hooded cardigan that I made in Hayfield Chunky, Hayfield Blossom Chunky, which was sent to me by Sirdar, who own Hayfield. It's a self-patterning yarn. They just released it for children's knits. So they had like lots of different patterns. The idea being that you literally just knit and the pattern appears. And I, I asked my sister what she fancied for my niece and that's what she picked. So we made this super cute little cardigan with like blossom all over it. Um, and yeah, it came out really, really nicely. Um, so I made that. And then I made another popcorn cardigan. <laughs> a friend at church had a little baby girl. Um, and so I made her a popcorn cardigan again with just a shade of yarn that I had in my stash. It's just, I think, I think it might be lavender the shade um it's like a nice purpley um bluey color because so that would be nice for her to have something that wasn't pink because everybody always buys pink so yeah I made that and not much more to say about that because that's the second one I made this year um and then I made some little Christmas decorations some little ornaments for the tree it was I actually made them for videos for work but then they ended up on our tree um so yeah that was November and then we move into December where um, I was actually surprisingly busy because I was really ill. I didn't sew at all, but I did knit because I was just sat on the sofa really very unwell. So we were in Germany for the first week of December and then after that I was in bed really unwell. Well, I wasn't in bed actually. I came down onto the sofa because I hate being in bed so just like bring like my duvet downstairs and sit on the sofa um so anyway the first thing that i finished in december was a little stocking that i made um to hang on the tree which was super cute and then i made a wreath um 
like I say, I wanted to replace my autumn crochet wreath. So I made this cute little knitted star wreath, which I thought came out really nicely. And that actually ended up being used on the table, not on the door. I was quite surprised, but it looked really nice, like flat on the table with a candle in the middle. Um, so yeah, I was quite pleased with that one. Um, and then I made some socks for my mother-in-law with um, West Yorkshire Spinners self-patterning um, sock yarn again. Um, this one was Wood Pigeon, which is in their bird range, which are just her colours. She's already worn them and she really likes them, so <laughs> that's positive. Um, so yeah, I made her those. And then the final finished make of 2023. <laughs> was the teddy pants by petite knit um now traditionally these are knitted in one color and you embroider a little teddy bear face on them i did not have enough i was trying to stash bust i made these for my niece for christmas she actually hasn't got it yet she's only three months old so she doesn't know it's christmas um but i was so unwell i just couldn't get them done in time um so yeah i made it with the yarn that i had available and i had blue and i had some cream in a four ply just stylecraft four ply yarn in my stash i used up the blue and some of the cream i think to be honest there was quite a lot of blue left there was probably enough to do the whole thing in blue but i didn't want to risk it so um i made the top i thought it'd be quite cute to do like a little top bit in in cream and then i've embroidered a rainbow on it um i'm not the biggest fan i must say of the embroidered rainbow um i thought about taking it off and maybe doing flowers instead but i know that like my sister will like it and that my niece will wear it quite a lot because it's got that kind of like handmade look to it um i think that's probably part of the reason i don't like it is i feel like it's edging too much on handmade <laughs> um which is a bit of a thing for me is i like i like that kind of rusticy handmade look but not like so much that it's like obviously handmade like you often get that from shops now where it's like rusticy handmade look um, so yeah i'm not sure about the rainbow but i think my sister will like it so i think i'm just going to post it i just finished it um the rainbow on it um this week so i finished the actual trousers and everything at the end of december but i just finished the rainbow on it this week so i think i'll probably send that out this week so yeah i've been umming and ahhing about whether i like the rainbow or not whether i need to take it off <laughs> um but yeah so that is everything oh my word i feel like i've been talking forever i think this video is like an hour long um <laughs> that is everything that i made in 2023 43 items wow um i am very proud of myself um i know we don't say that kind of thing in england but i'm going to say it um i make everything in my wardrobe um apart from underwear i make my own socks now so I, the only things i don't make are tights bras and knickers <laughs> um i basically make everything else in my wardrobe and um i love making stuff and i'm making stuff for my home um i'm learning how to make blinds and cushions and curtains and every year my sewing and my knitting is getting better and i'm just loving it i'm just loving this handmade life that i've like this is what i do with my life as i make things um so 2023 was a really good year for making really pleased and i'm so excited for 2024 um make sure that you guys subscribe because um next week i'm going to be releasing my 2024 plans and it's not just my like making plans it's just like general plans um all to do with living a handmade homegrown and slow life um i've got so much content around that to come out this year and it's going to be such a good year i just know it um so yeah if you enjoyed this video please give it a like um it just really helps my interactions like my views on my videos recently just haven't been very great um so if you are a subscriber and you do enjoy watching my videos if you could like maybe give this a like i would really appreciate it um and also leave me a comment and let me know what your favorite thing that you made in 2023 was um i'd really love to hear that um if you feel like you could support this channel more um please do check out my Substack because as i say um you will get a beautiful um handwritten curated post into your inbox every week on how to live a handmade homegrown and slow life um which is obviously worth signing up for just for that <laughs> but if you do want to help support my content creation work that is also another great way if you subscribe to my Substack as a paid subscriber that's a great way to help support me um as well so um check that out in the description box 
um thank you so much for watching guys um i will see you next week i hope you all have wonderful weeks bye Thank you.